I took a break last week, but I'm back in the saddle again. I want to catch up with some of the action from the new in chess classic, the latest Magnus Carlsen online tournament, and there was a dream final. Hikaru Nakamura, speed specialist against world champion Magnus Carlsen, and this, I think, was the pick of the games. So this is from the final, Hikaru Nakamura with white. And it's a Queen's Gambit, or at least a slightly strange variation of the Queen's Gambit, which I rather like for black. Instead of Bishop e7 or Knight f6, Carlsen played pawn to a6. Now, this is in fact a very old move. Played by, uh, well, if you care to look at your databases, uh, David Janowski in the London International at the end of the 19th century, I think it was 1899. And, well, he beat some good players. He beat Steinitz with this move. There's some logic to this, because basically, you know, you want to take here and hang on to that pawn. And even if that pawn is protected like this, then you can take and play b5, and then go c5. Well, a typical Queen's Gambit accepted position, actually. So that's the idea you're going to take here and either hang on to it or get b5 in. So pawn takes pawn on d5. I should say that this variation, although you know it goes way back in chess history, in fact, has become rather popular over the last few years. And Carlsen, and indeed Nakamura, is certainly no strangers to this position. And the other nice thing about this from Black's viewpoint is that Black hasn't yet committed this bishop. So it can come to d6 in one move. And, well, if you've been following my Queen's Gambit videos over the past, well, few months really, um, you'll know that this exchange of bishops is often very desirable for black because after the exchange, and that's what happened, then that just clears the back rank. The queen finds a nice square, safe square, and yeah, it means you're going to be able to connect the rooks very well. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, so far in this game, things have worked out very well for Carson. So bishop d3, and now bishop g4 from Carlsen. Good idea. So this bishop swings round and potentially can come round here to yeah, exchange, exchange off this, this powerful piece here. That's one idea anyway. Queen b3. Okay, so that seeks to exploit the fact that this bishop has actually come into the game at a very early stage. But actually, black is okay. Knight c6. And here's the point. If that pawn on b7 is taken, then black gets tremendous activity. Now that the king is away from e8, knight, b3, knight b4 is quite a serious threat, as well as rook b2. And that's quite unpleasant, actually. So back here, knight c6 just played. h3 from Nakamura. So the bishop goes round. And here Nakamura played knight e2, which is an okay move, but I guess the, the real test is to play g4 and then to castle queenside. Uh, that looks like uh, a reasonable way to play, or maybe take first. Um, and it's just very, very double-edged. But after knight e2, I think maybe Nakamura underestimated this next move. Bishop takes e2, just giving up that bishop. But taking off one of these knights, I think, is excellent strategy. In fact, black's knights, are, as we'll see... <laughs> are very useful in this position. So castles. And once again, queen takes b7 is a dreadful mistake. Here that actually traps the queen. 
So rook c1, okay. Reasonable move. Um, if that knight gets stuck on the c file, then that's pretty unpleasant. So excellent move from Carlson now. Knight d8, which looks very strange going to the back rank. But that knight will be able to bounce back into the game very shortly. And in the meantime, White has to think, OK, what's what's my strategy here? You know, very often with this typical, well, so-called Carlsbad pawn structure, uh, White goes for a minority attack, but obviously not possible with the Queen sitting on the Queen side. And a push through the middle looks very unlikely as well. So all in all, I just think uh, quite a comfortable position for Black. Certainly no advantage yet, but not so easy for White to devise a strategy. So queen a3 from Nakamura. Now, I think that is a very good practical move. Um, I mean, Black can exchange here, but then, I mean, while I don't think there's any particular disadvantage for Black, I think it's easy play for White. You know, you put your king on d2, you put your rooks on b1 and c1, and there's enough pressure on the queen side. So good move from Carlson. Just dropping the queen back on d7. Castles g6, that cuts out the bishop, claims the f5 square. So there's no longer, uh, well, a piece will no longer arrive at um, f5. Knight f4, okay, this knight needs to be redeployed. Rook e8, well, again, if you've been following these Queen's Gambit games in um, over the past few months, you'll know that the rook belongs on e8, on that semi-open file. Uh, well, we're going to see again how just somehow things always happen on the e-file, although it looks unlikely at the moment. Bishop c2, well, I think this is good strategy. Um, the bishop isn't particularly going anywhere, but it makes room for that knight to come to this crucial square d3 looking at c5 and e5 those really important squares time to get that knight off the back rank that covers c5 of course and now well if nakamura wants to play sort of fairly calmly you could play knight e5 and this end game looks about equal Certainly, I don't think black has any difficulties there, but um, I mean, white is very solid. Yeah, it looks about equal in the end game. But Naka, well, he likes to put the pressure on his opponent. He doesn't play it safe, and which is, of course, why you know he's he's such um, such such an entertaining player. You know, always oh, great to watch Nakamura's games. F four. So this potentially starts an attack on the king side, um, and this pawn trio. Uh, well, this is the, the the Pillsbury pawn trio, named after Harry Nelson Pillsbury, um, the the great American player who liked this strategy against the Queen's Gambit. You know, with with the knight on e5. So Carson plays knight g7. So that's a very typical idea. So this knight swings back, opens up the e-file, and potentially wants to come into this lovely score on f5. And here, the most sensible move is to play knight e5. And I still think the position is a roughly level. Um, I mean, black can play queen e7, queen c7. But Nakamura was tempted by the kingside attack and he went for it with f5 now the threat is to take on g6 to get to the knight on f6 so you can see that that pawn is taboo here of course it could be taken but there's no doubt that white gets compensation in this position can take here and rook c2 
the rook swings across, you know, at some point the queen will probably come across as well. There's compensation. I think that's all you can say. Black is probably all right, but, well, it starts to get tricky. And, you know, it's not nice that the queen has gone to the back rank. Seems miles away from the king side. In practical terms, not an easy one. But Carlson's next move was excellent. G5, just from a positional point of view, a really nice move because you can see that that knight on f6 is just a beautiful blockader. It blockades that pawn on f5, which means that that bishop is not going to come into the game. So, so long as that knight remains there, then black is okay. Now, the downside is that when you play g5, of course, it slightly weakens black's king's position. But, well, let's see what happens. Knight e5. Queen c7. Aha! Uh -huh. So, once that knight has moved to f... Uh, excuse me, once the pawn has moved to f5, then the knight on e5 does not have the same level of support. It's supported by the pawn on d4. But already, that means that black can think about the exchange sacrifice. Um, and with such a solid position, solid queenside pawns, knights with good positions on the king's side, that is a very attractive proposition. And for example, if queen here, then simply rook e7 followed by the queen's rook coming over, and again, potential to sacrifice the exchange. That's unpleasant for white. And see what happens in the game. So Nakamura understands, of course, he's got to create some chaos here. H4, he's got to try and shake things up, open up the kingside. Uh, Carlson was not tempted by taking the pawn. Instead, he just he tried to keep the position as close as possible, even though that does look a little bit loose. Um, the move that I would like to play here with white is e4 to try and bring that queen across into the into the king side. <clears throat> but queen b6, that's a killer move. Hitting the pawn and threatening to play rook takes knight because of that killer pin on the diagonal. So queen c3 first by Nakamura, also protecting the knight as well. Knight h5. Solid move, good move from Carlson. That knight spins into the game, supporting the knight, but also potentially looking to play knight g3 and maybe into e4. But it just it feels like a solid move. Nice move taking away key squares. And here, even though it it looks pretty mad, I still think e4 is the way to go. It, it, e4 was really bad. In the, uh, in, in the previous position we looked at. Here it's not so clear, actually. Queen b6 is still a very interesting move for black. Um, but, you know, if Nakamura is going to stir up trouble, I think that might be the way to go. Remember, it's a rapid game. Instead, he played queen e1, covering the g3 square. But now this exchange sacrifice is an absolute gift absolute gift for the world champion you know you don't need to calculate in this kind of position the important thing is that black is absolutely rock solid can white use his extra rook in this position well no the f file is closed the queen side is completely closed so the rooks basically don't have a job in this position what about this bishop no, still completely blocked in by the pawn on f5. So basically white has nothing to do here, whereas black has plenty of ideas. Well, I mean, just adding to the pressure on the pawn on e3 for a start, but these knights could be cruising into the position that h4 pawn looks a bit loose as well. So let's see what happens. Nakamura begging for an exchange of queens here, but no, Carlson won't have it. Queenie won once again, please, a queen exchange. 
Nope. Not gonna happen. Queen f2, rook e8, simple move, strong move. The rook hits the open e file, rook d1. And now the queen returns to e5, just a dominating move. A kind of move that's so easy to make in a rapid play game. It just looks good, it must be good. Rook d4, and well, Nakamura just again begging for a queen exchange now he's happy to give up a pawn here because it means that here he'll be able to exchange a pair of rooks or at least force the rook away from the e-file and white has chances to survive in that end game but no of course that that's too cheap that's too cheap much better for black to keep those dominating pieces, that dominating queen, and roll forward with this lovely central pawn majority. And now the knight comes in. Rook here. Now here's a moment where, once again, Carlson could grab material, but he plays it very cool. So you could play knight e4 here, but watch what happens. Basically, the position would trade down, exchange down into a rook and pawn endgame. Now, here, white is only one pawn down. But suddenly that rook looks a bit strange. The rook can come to d7. Decent drawing chances for white. So Carlson was very canny. King f8. Well, what's the point of that one? Watch. Okay, let's let's make a, a random waiting move for white. Okay, let's say b3. Well, in this case, the tactics don't work out so well for white because here, knight takes rook. The king protects the rook on e8. So this is just a winning endgame for black. So that was the point of king f8 to protect that rook, which now sets up knight e4. So Nakamura played rook d3, knight e4. Now, uh, well, Nakamura retreated the queen. Let's just have a quick look at rook takes d5. This is interesting. Let's, let's look at that end game once more. So it's a really similar end game. But this is different because instead of the king on g8, it's on f8. And here, king e7 guards the entry squares. And if king takes pawn, then rook f2 cleans up along the seventh rank. So once again, that king f8 move would come into play there and black has a winning endgame. So fascinating how this move has such... Uh, it's, it's a finesse, but it has a big effect on these variations. So Nakamura came back with the queen, but now this is absolutely hopeless. I mean, maybe he should have tried the endgame. I mean, it's, it's impossible to give advice, really. It's just very unpleasant for white. But now it's a winning attack. Queen h1 check. Now the king gets driven out into the middle and here actually after king d3 nakamura well he didn't wait for carlson's next move he just resigned this position there are lots of ways for black to win this um let me pick a flash one for you c4 check let's just drive the king all the way up the board and lead it to its doom here is that mate yeah we got there in the end there you go not completely forced but you get the idea in any case that was the final position and it is completely hopeless um well there was some more action in the match after this game but that was a really decisive moment and well, I think Carlsen really had that one completely under control. Whereas, well, Nakamura was just a little bit too rash with his move f5. I think it was a bit much. Knight e5 would still be okay for white. Uh, 
but it's it, actually it's a funny position where actually both sides have to be very careful about pushing their pawns because uh, they you know it can lead to to big weaknesses. So there we go. Magnus Carlsen won his first tournament for ages. Sounds ridiculous to say it, but um, anyway, it's only an online tournament. But I look forward to more classical tournaments anyway, and hopefully in the near future. Coming up on the channel, well, this week I'm going to be looking at more King's Gambit games. Not Queen's Gambit, but King's Gambit games. Uh, I want to look at some of... Well, my favourite King's Gambit games from history, but also bringing it right up to date as well. So look out for that on the channel. Thanks for watching.